The inevitable now, Ginny shouts. You have Invita-class powers, just like Prodigal. You can manipulate atoms and control gravity. These words hit you like a ton of bricks. Well, that can't possibly be true, just like all the other 57,000 things that have happened. <laughs> it can't be true. Excuse me, Prodigal says, the smile disappearing from her face. It's true, Grandma says at your side. We didn't want you to know the things you can do. Because we're a bunch of fucking liars. <laughs> Wait, how could Grandma and Ginny have kept this from you? How could they... Don't try to use the atomic, the inevitable. It's too unstable here under the plant, Jenny barks. Bin gravity, you have to do it now. What on earth is Jenny talking? You've always been most annoying, Jennifer. Prodigal interrupts, pointing her laser gun at Jenny. You only have a second to react. Attempt to use my gravity. Infinibility. Power cost unknown. You react blindly, trying to extend your flight powers to Prodigal somehow. You feel a stab of pain rip into your abdomen, and your levels drop dangerously. However, Prodigal's gun does shift to the right, causing the laser blast to miss Ginny by inches. This buys you precious seconds to get more instructions. Just focus on the feeling you get when you fly and apply it to the cage bars, Ginny shouts. You lock your eyes on the metal bars and tense your muscles the way you do when you want to fly, but instead of lifting your own body, you focus on lifting the bars. With enormous strain, you watch as the bars twist and pull upward, making enough space for you to escape. That's unreal. You feel like you may have used half your power level to do this, but it doesn't matter. You're free, and it's time to take Prodigal down. How are we looking? Oh, fuck it. I'm not that bad off. Let's punch this bitch. A very smart move, considering Prodigal can just use her kick shields to block your long-range energy attacks. Mm-hmm. Grimma remembers. You rush at Prodigal, generating a layer of purple energy armor around yourself for protection. Ready to strike, you construct an energy weapon to attack with boxing gloves. I like it. You throw a punch at Prodigal, your fist wrapped in a giant purple blot boxing glove. Prodigal ducks under your blow with impossible speed, then swivels around to kick you in the face. Luckily, your energy armor takes the brunt of the blow, but Prodigal quickly disarms you by blasting you point-blank with another oversized plasma gun. You feel your energy armor fall away, so you strike out with your knee, connecting with Prodigal's stomach. You, she groans and drops her weapon. You step back to strike again, but Prodigal moves faster, whipping her fist at your face. You feel one of her fingers break as it connects with your jaw, cracking a molar. My teeth! You bitch! You both howl with pain, staggering away from each other. As you spit out bits of shattered tooth and blood, you notice out of the corner of your eye that Grandma has begun to climb out of the gap you made in the cage. Uh, seeing that Grandma's alright, you decide it might be time to recharge. Your power level's at 47, and your health level's at 70. Do you think you need to recharge to survive this brawl with Prodigal? I'm not wasting any time. As you turn back toward Prodigal, something hot rips into your hand, causing you scream. <laughs> okay. While you were distracted, Prodigal blasted you with one of her weapons. Like, fucking shit! Don't waste any time, you're fucking distracted! <laughs> Though her aim is a bit off, it seems. Or at least, that's what you think. Until you look down and see that Prodigal's blast has incinerated your parents' silvered ring. All that remains is a charred band of ash. Prodigal knew exactly what she was aiming for. Oh, did I destroy your precious? Prodigal says, smiling once again. How clumsy of me. The sight of the destroyed ring makes your vision flash red. This ends and out. Lash out with my infinibility. You try accessing your gravity powers, and it comes far easier than you expect. Perhaps the rage has helped you focus. You don't care. You just watch as the air around Prodigal grows thick, the gravity surrounding her increasing tenfold. Prodigal immediately smashes into the ground, her arm twisting with a sickening snap. You release the gravity hold, feeling lightheaded. I took a lot out of you, but it worked. With Prodigal down for the count, you turn back to the cages to find that Grandma has already freed Jenny. I was very impressive, the ineffable, the Grandma says. I only wish I had gotten a piece of her. But you're too furious to celebrate. I warned you that inviting Tirana Rain into our lives was a mistake. 
Grimus, now is certainly not the time for an I told you so. Grandma starts hands on her hips. You know perfectly well. We don't have time for this, Jenny yells. We need to find a way out of here now. Forcing your frayed nerves to calm, you scan the room and immediately spot the telelock that brought you here sitting on a computer console across the bunker. But as you move to retrieve it, you also realize that Prodigal isn't on the ground anymore. How do you fucking people function? How have you lost sight of the ball? Keep your eyes on the ball. On the birdie. On the enemy who brought you here wants to kill you. She destroyed the telelock. Well, we're all dead. Prodigal is up. Everyone get close. You shout, ready to generate an energy shield. There'll be no need for that. Prodigal says. You, Grandma, and Jenny all spend to find Prodigal now standing in the corner of the bunker, wearing some kind of elaborate metal bodysuit. Before any of you can react, Prodigal plugs two large syringes into her veins. Then she screams, Are you fucking kidding me? This fucking... Why am I smarter than protagonist? Why can't I be this fucking blissfully retarded? I nearly fucking hit my, uh, my monitor with my water bottle. That was a... That was a poorly aimed swap because, uh... That was the heat of the moment. Air conditioner took one for the team. Good one job, air conditioner. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, that could've gone bad. And so there I was, staring at my cracked monitor. <laughs> Still think I got a warranty. Don't think that expires until 2016, summer. Yeah, that's fine. At any rate, that was a good moment. <sighs> it's done, Prodigal says, composing herself. I'll make this very simple for all of our loyal viewers at home. I have created the ultimate weapon, a machine that generates a solid wall of energy, stretching ten miles high and wide. As Prodigal speaks, she doesn't look so good. She has started to sweat, and her cheeks have turned a pale shade of yellow. We're under the Big Sur fusion plant, because I needed a power source of nuclear proportions. Now that I have tapped into the reactor above, the wave is activated. It's set to sweep west from here to the ocean, decimating Millennia City in its wake. Once Prodigal finishes speaking, a video monitor sparks to life, displaying a solid black wall of energy moving across the remains of Burn State Park, which was paved over to build MC years ago. Where the fuck are the other heroes? Where? What the fucking shit? As the miles-wide death wave moves, it incinerates everything in its path. Luckily, there's nothing but wildlife between the big surf fusion plant and Millennia City. But it can't be long before the wave reaches the outskirts of the city. Grandma and Jenny both gasp, and you raise your hands to attack. Well, it's a good thing we have some energy left, but perhaps I should have taken the recharge. As, uh, and sacrificed some health. I, you know, I thought that, uh, immediately rushing into the fight would uh, be okay, but... All right, um, well, I seem to have lots of complications whenever it comes to fiddling with technology and my powers. Maybe I can do this. Uh, all right, so we, we just like fucking spin the power, okay, whatever. Not so fast, Prodigal screams. Blasting the generator won't help. I was sure to make it rather durable. Impervious, one might say. It's got a coating of some delicious new metal I brewed called... Uh, Madinium. You hesitate for a moment, then jump as a loud bang echoes across the cave. You turn to Jenny, who has picked up one of Prodigal's jaunt guns and fired it at the generator suit. But the shot just bounces off the generator's sleek metal surface and doubles back, knocking Jenny clean off her feet. Grandma rushes to her side. She indicates that Jenny is alive, just unconscious. The blast only stunned her. Thanks, slugger. Told you so! Prodigal whines. My powers are directly fueling the generator along with the nuclear boost, hence the need for this rather slimming bodysuit. So as long as my heart is still beating, that wave marches on. Which I'm afraid leaves us in another rather harsh reality. No, not again, you think, following Prodigal's logic. The only way to stop that wave now is to kill me, Prodigal says, locking eyes with you. It looks like you have another moral dilemma to face, the ineffable. B 
Become a cold-blooded murderer to save millions of lives? Or spare me and risk the death of an entire city? Your heart pounds. You can't possibly make a choice this big. Are you fucking kidding me? Cold-blooded murderer? Alright, yeah, I can't possibly make a choice this big. Oh, and the wave hits the first populated area in about 20 seconds. The very edge of the eastern fringe is no less. The ineffable's very own hometown. How fetchingly fitting. So let's pull it together, shall we? Why is Prodigal doing this? If she really wanted all those people to die, she'd never tell you how to stop her. Besides, Prodigal can't really want you to kill her, can she? It makes no sense, but then again, Prodigal doesn't exactly seem to be the picture of sanity. In her mind, this is probably win-win. Whatever you do, she believes she'll become a legend. This... No, you can't. You can't choose. Grimeth, it's alright, Grandma says, placing a hand on your shoulder. Just do what your parents would have done. You stare into Grandma's eyes, and she nods back at you resolute. Take whatever power you need from me and end this, Grandma says, sensing that your levels have gotten dangerously low. You quickly siphon off the power you need from Grandma, because you know exactly what you need to do. You've gotten this far by ignoring the law, and it's not going to stop you now. For you, the choice is as good as made. Kill Prodigal and save millions of lives. Unless she's actually lying about the whole deranged affair. Which, I reckon, that could make me a murderer. Oh, also, I got some more power, everyone. Hooray! Achievement get Kill Prodigal. You charge a deadly surge of energy in your forearms, locking eyes with Prodigal. Oh, the ineffable. Prodigal says, a sad smile crossing her face. Without hesitation, you unleash a torrent of energy. Prodigal screams as the blast rips a hole for the exposed part of her chest. She lingers for a few seconds before her body finally slumps to the ground, a smile still twisted across her face. Hmm. I reflexively put a hand towards my chest. You stare at Prodigal, mouth open. You just killed someone. Grandma doesn't say anything, and you can't bear to look at her. Instead, you turn to the screen to find what? Toronto Rain? The wave has stopped. You did it. You defeated Prodigal and saved your city. But at what cost? All right. Fucking. Fucking. We gotta be fucking close to done with this game. Wow. Did the, uh, the past few chapters, particularly this one, really overstay their welcome? Ah. <laughs> oh. Jesus.